Now, a little while ago, we did this really cool video comparing our V10 Excursion to a black 2500 7.4 liter Suburban. And I felt pretty chuffed with myself because it was quite tricky lining up an Excursion and a Suburban in the year 2022. Well, as all of you pointed out, they didn't really compete with each other. You see, the V10 Excursion competed against the Holy Grail, the 8.1 liter V8 Suburban. And I thought to myself, how the heck am I gonna find one of these? I had never even seen an 8.1 liter Suburban. They're that rare nowadays. Well, my friend Brendan said, I'll just buy one. And he did. And in this video, it's V10 Excursion versus 8.1 liter Yukon XL. That's right, the two heavyweights, the two battleships, the two dinosaurs, let's be honest, fighting it out. And in this video, we're doing a zero to 60 test, see which is quicker, the Ford Triton V10 or the Chevy Vortec 8.1 V8. And then we're also gonna see which one is better off-road. So I have learned a very important lesson about the internet, which I will try to abide by today. It turns out you can't say anything bad about the excursion or people will show up with bricks through your window. But it's true, the excursion is probably the most loved vehicle, maybe of all time. These things have a cult-like following and I really pissed a lot of people off in the last video, so I'll try to tone it down a little. But here's what the excursion is. It's 19 feet worth of America. It is over the top in every single way. Ford saw the success of the Suburban and the 2500 Suburban throughout the 1990s and said, let's do that, but just make it ridiculous. And they did, so they took the Super Duty platform and then they crafted the, <laughs> the taillights of a van on the back, squared off where the bed would be, added about a thousand seats and called it a day. Now for years and years and years, General Motors had the crown when it came to the biggest SUV on the market. And then Ford came out with the Excursion and they kind of said, yeah, it's a little much. It's just a little much. So the Excursion is 226.7 inches long. And the GMC Yukon XL is like 219. So it's a little bit smaller. Like they didn't quite have the craziness in terms of length, but in most countries, this would still be classified as a commercial vehicle. So it is still insane. And even by modern day standards, this is a big vehicle, but like the height isn't quite as crazy. The width isn't kind of quite as crazy. You feel like that if someone were to tap into you with the front bumper of this vehicle at like three miles an hour, you wouldn't be turned into a pancake. You could probably survive with major flesh wounds. I got really dark really quickly. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with it. So Brendan, hey. he's a great guy that just keeps <laughs> buying these wonderful, magnificent beasts. We're gonna do a zero to 60 in the Ford. It's slightly uphill and then slightly downhill. Not very scientific, but we're just gonna see what happens with a 6.8. Are we ready? Yeah, All let's right. go. I'm just gonna floor it. <laughs> the whole thing gawks to the right. <laughs> All right, so this makes its peak power at like 3,200 RPM, and it's gonna go all the way to 5,000 before it shifts. There's 50. Not a fast automobile. And there is oh, there 60. 15 seconds! 15! Not too bad. I mean, you're up here <laughs> at elevation, right? All right, the you're guy, moving. yes, it's not too bad. <laughs> you're moving a pretty true. heavy vehicle, right? Well, like 7,000 pounds <laughs> yeah. of vehicle, yeah. Actually, it is pretty respectable. So, I mean, it's not a rocket ship. Um, if you want to go fast, buy a diesel and then make it make 3,000 pound feet of torque. Um, there you go. But it's acceptable, right? Yeah. And it makes kind of an interesting noise. You have to admit that. It's kind yeah, of a... Almost like Dodge Viper-esque, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Dodge Vipers kind of sell them like milk trucks. Yeah. You know <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so... Or is it that milk trucks sound like Dodge Vipers? Oh, maybe milk trucks sound like Dodge Vipers. <laughs> That's a good point. All right, so about 15 seconds from 0 to 60. Let's see if the GMC with the 8.1 can do any better. All right, Brendan, whenever you're ready, let's unleash that 8.1 liter. All right, we'll see how she does. Whoa, a little bit of wheel spin, <laughs> do you feel that? Yeah, a little bit. All right, so they're okay. four and a half thousand, about 5,000 RPM as well. There's, There's 50, 50 miles an hour. 55 and, and 60. 60. Wow. Okay. 11.85. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a difference, that's for sure. <laughs> Dude, this thing is a performance machine. Now. Yeah, wow, I didn't expect that. I mean, uh, I knew this had a little bit more power, but... It's pretty good, actually, yeah. for what it is. Now, um, mileage-wise, we're sitting at nearly 300,000 miles. Yeah. 300K. 
I thought there'd be a decent amount of power loss for sure, considering the amount of miles that's on this thing, but she still runs great. Yeah, <laughs> I can't 11, believe it. 11.85, and that, um, <laughs> that Ford actually has like nearly half the mileage. It's at 170, so um, that's pretty good. So certainly from a straight line performance, the uh, GMC took the Ford. So let's talk about that mighty engine. Now this is a Yukon XL, and this of course is a 2500, so there's a, a huge number of 1500s on the market, but the 2500 is kind of unusual in the GMT 800. And then engine choices, a six liter, which a lot of them had, and then the top dog, the Vortec 8100. 8.1 liters, 496 cubic inches, worth of pushrod V8. I think this was the last ever big block General Motors engine. Of course, fuel injected. Now, horsepower, um, right around 700 horsepower and 830 pound-feet of torque. No, no, not, not that much. 340 horsepower, though, and 455 pound-feet of torque. Very durable, very reliable engine. This truck, you wouldn't guess it, has 294,000 miles on it and still runs like an absolute top but it's just so crazy this is one of the largest engines ever fitted to like a standard passenger vehicle uh, i think cadillac had like an 8.2 ram may have pushed it to like 8.3 i think in some of the stuff they were doing for a while there but 8.1 liters insane that is one liter per cylinder there's a lot of cars in europe whose entire engines are smaller than one cylinder's worth of displacement on this vortex now the ford is um well, it's got a small engine, just 6.8 liters. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. It is still 6,800 cubic centimeters, which is, you know, pretty sizable. And it's a V10, so you get two extra cylinders in the Ford Triton uh, V10 motor. Now, um, in the last video, I did point out that these had that spark plug issue, and people said it was overdone a little bit. And I do apologize if I've offended you. Um, I, I have done a lot more research into it. And yes, the spark plug issue was a problem on the V8s and the V10s, but it wasn't a huge problem, and there are fixes for it. But overall, these Triton V10s are also insanely, incredibly reliable. They use these engines in motor homes and in generators and in industrial equipment for years and years and years and years and years. And they actually just discontinued the V10 recently. So even though this is a 2000 model year excursion, um, the engine could have been found all the way up until like 2019, 2020. And 310 horsepower, 425 pound-feet of torque. And now you're thinking, aha, the General Motors product is victorious. It has more power, it has more torque. But then of course we're forgetting the most important thing about the Excursion. The reason they are so loved is because you get them with the mighty Power Stroke diesel. So the 7.3 liter Power Stroke and then the 6.0 liter Power Stroke. And that is where Ford came out on top in terms of like max torque. The Power Strokes were just off the charts compared to what General Motors had. And I think this was a missed opportunity because GM, they could have they could have taken that Duramax and plopped it in the suburban body style, but they never did. It's a common conversion. People make Dura burbs all the time, but them actually doing it from the factory would have been really cool, and I wish they had done it. So even though in this particular matchup, big block gas versus big block gas, the, the GMC wins, Ford could have come out on top with that power stroke. All right, Brendan, what do you think of our off-road course here? Looks pretty nice. Looks like you guys have made a lot of progress. I've always wanted to check out Andre's pit. Yeah, this is Andre's pit. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> And wait till you see Nathan's crack, you'll be amazed. Um, <laughs> so this is our, one of our off-road test areas and it's pretty much done. So we've got a few obstacles. We've got holes, which is a great test of articulation. We've got logs, which will test the ride um, and traction. And then we have rocks, which is putting it all together. And I just realized I messed up because I'm gonna go into low range, but the previous owner converted this to manual locking hubs. So I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> So, first up, we'll go ahead and give holes a shot. Now, this is a uh, very much an old school SUV. So, we are looking at body on frame, of course, with leaf springs, which is yeah. pretty old school. Yeah. By old school, I mean like Roman Catholic old school. <laughs> Pre pre-industrialization. But we shall see what happens here as uh, we go through holes. So, that right front tire is gonna dip into the hole. Thing might be too wide, it might just <laughs> drive drive through the holes versus into them. 
Ah, it's pretty good actually. Yeah, you're getting in there. Yeah, that's not bad at all. The other advantage we have in the Ford is we have a solid front axle. So we got really pretty good articulation for the size of this vehicle. So even though it, it's dipping down in there, we're not losing any traction whatsoever. That's pretty good. Just crawling right through like it's nothing. And even though um, this is not certainly the quickest engine, when you stick it in low range, even though we're looking at well over 7,000 pounds, um, it's able to kind of traverse over everything. Brendan, these seats are like lazy boy recliners. <laughs> That is an insanely comfortable set of seats on this puppy. I think that this was kind of like peak comfort as far as seats goes <laughs> on the GM SUVs. It was all downhill <laughs> after 2003. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into low range, um, and this one doesn't have locking comps. The Ford shouldn't either, but uh, it was converted, which is pretty common. So let's go into four-wheel drive low. A little clunk there. Ooh, easy. Nice. Push button. Um, so why, I have a question for you, I have a lot of questions for you, why Why do you keep buying the GMC versions instead of the Chevrolet versions? Is there like a brand loyalty going on there? <laughs> you know, when I started buying and selling cars, I, uh, I just had the mindset of, I'm not going to be specific about what I'm looking for, I'm just a sucker for a good deal. Okay. And this was a good deal. This was a good deal, huh? Yep. <laughs> Alright, now this has a fully independent front suspension, and we shall see how it does in holes as a comparison to the mighty Ford. Also wide, but certainly feels a little smaller, right? Yeah. You don't feel like you're towering as high above as you did in the Ford. Also very impressive torque, and also very impressive ground clearance. You know, we're not hitting anything in holes here. Traversing it nice and slowly. Very easy, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah. I, I kind of expected this to struggle a little more, especially with your uh, your nice tires you have on the. On yeah, yours. yeah, but even out of the box, these are so capable. All right, look at that. Nice. That was pretty good. Yeah. Fly right out of there. This thing is uh, feeling pretty good for 294,000 miles. So we're gonna just approach this at a constant steady speed. We're bouncing over them. Now this is plenty wide for every vehicle I've ever tested it on. And looking at it from the viewpoint of an excursion, it's looking pretty narrow. <laughs> it's not it's like you'll take up the whole log. <laughs> <laughs> not many vehicles you can say that on. This might just flatten the logs completely. <laughs> All right. No, it's doing it. Come on, grip. <laughs> it's actually doing pretty well. It's a little rough yeah. and ready on the ride quality. I can't tell if we're driving through the logs or on top of the logs. Oh, <laughs> everything's falling off the dash there. All right, that, that was, was pretty fun. good. Yeah. That was actually way more comfortable than I was expecting. Wow. Good, good work, Ford. Now with the leaf springs, I was expecting to be really bouncing. I think part of the advantage of the excursion is the front wheels are in a different zip code than the rear wheels. You know, the <laughs> wheelbase is so long. Yep. Nice and easy. See how the ground clearance is up logs compared to the Ford. Ooh, we got a little bit of a front end bounce there. Did you see oh, that? Yeah. Yep. Nice and easy. Don't want to tear anything out the bottom. So this is where you start to see that the Ford does a little better. I think that solid front axle is a little bit more custom to articulating over the logs, but this is not having too much of a problem. Also very impressive torque out of that 8.1 liter. <laughs> Do you track your fuel economy? Do you know what you're getting? Um, well, I just picked this up today, but... Uh, oh, yeah. so you don't know! <laughs> yeah, but uh, the computer says, I think, 9? <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. Okay, not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. I'd say that was pretty good. Maybe a little less sure-footed as a Ford, but certainly we made it up with not too much drama. So the interior of the Excursion. Well, uh, there were two different trims. There was the XLT and the Limited. This one is the XLT and it's basic, long-lasting, and basic again. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's this is a Super Duty interior. This was like a, this was a, this is a work truck interior. There's just not much else to say about it. The plastics are um, of the durable, long-lasting kind. The design is of the durable, long-lasting kind. The switches are of the... I don't know. What do you want me to say? It's just blobby and square and 
it's fine. The XLT, I mean, sorry, the Limited gave you like wood, wood, which was kind of fun, but I, I don't know. It, it, let's just go to the GMC. So the Yukon interior is also fairly basic by modern standard, but a little bit more cohesive in its design. Of course, this one has two bucket seats in the front and this Yukon XL also has these nice leather seats, which are, in my opinion, a little bit more lounge-like and comfortable. Now, one of the big differences that you do notice about this vehicle compared to the Excursion is you sit a lot lower. Both of these are four-wheel drive equipped models, but that Excursion is several inches taller than this and you certainly feel it from the driving experience. So this is much more standard crossover SUV like. Now a couple of cool things in here, uh, I like the steering wheel on these a lot more. I think the four spoke is cool with the steering wheel buttons. Uh, both of them have very cohesive gauge clusters and this one has a really pretty nifty little infotainment screen. Look at that, GMC sound by Bose. Now it is not a touch screen display. This is actually pretty similar to what we have. Oh, did I just lie to you? I totally just lied to you. So how come our O3 Cadillac is not touchscreen, but the O3 Yukon is touchscreen? What is General Motors doing there? All right, so this is better than the Cadillac system by default, but overall the interior in this is uh, quite nice. Um, a little bit more style going on than what you find in the Ford. Now the trunk in this Yukon is just a standard lift gate style, although this was kind of a fun feature. There was a way you could just pop the glass for smaller items, which was pretty thoughtful. Uh, but storage capacity in this, 45.7 cubic feet, or if you remove and fold down the seats, like 131 cubic feet of space. So a lot of capacity in this model. And then third row, easily removable. Now the Excursion does have this unique lift style and then barn style door, which was kind of funky, but never really caught on, I think, with a lot of manufacturers. But what you do get is even more space in the Ford. So you get um, 48 cubic feet of space in standard configuration, and then up to 146 when you pull everything out, which is just absolutely absurd. So you did get more, more space for stuff in the back of the Ford. This Ford Excursion can tow up to 10 thousand pounds, which is a ridiculous amount for any SUV. Until I read the owner's manual on this O3 Yukon XL, because this one, if it's got the 373s, is rated to tow 10,100 pounds, 100 pounds more. But if it's got the 410s, 12,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds on a gas V8 SUV. Absolutely nuts. So you got like two paths here. Yeah, we do. We have kind of the easier side and the harder side. We're gonna try the overland side, as I call it, which is gonna be the right side, right. which might actually be harder in these vehicles because <laughs> usually you go on top of the rocks, but with this vehicle, you're gonna be more straddling it. So why? We'll see what happens. We do have a couple skid plates under there. So pretty good. Wow. I'm starting to see why people like these things. Yeah. At least when you're going off road. Dude, I'm really impressed. <laughs> Way impressed by the four. That's so impressive. Yeah. You know, I was really not expecting much. I was kind of expecting a bouncy ride, not a lot of traction. But that just freaking killed it. Yeah. Right, let's see how we do it over rocks here. Gonna take the same line, make it nice and easy. Put that sign there. I do like these column shifts. These are pretty satisfying. You don't get don't get to use these very much anymore in 2022, you know? Yeah. Certainly better than a push button. Certainly better than a push button or a rotary knob, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, climbing up the rocks course here. Hey, it's doing better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it, honestly. I I knew that uh, your Ford was good, but I didn't expect this to be so good. Off it's also doing pretty well. Yeah. That was very impressive. So also a very little amount of slipping. So we're gonna try one more here. I call this trenches. Man, this gearing is awesome. I think this thing has 373s, I wanna say, but seems to be plenty low for what it is. Now in trenches, we're gonna get nice and articulated, and basically we're gonna set the vehicle off kilter and see um, how the uh, four-wheel drive system works. Going into these trenches, it looks like you're like wider than the entire course. Yeah, I know. We're gonna have to get a little <laughs> creative here. Hopefully we don't roll it over. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now we're in the course. All right, so we're gonna see how that front end articulation is. Get it nice and off kilter here. Oh! Oh. I was thinking about it. I think we're 
stuck. Oh, yeah. I, don't fin I think we finally found one that uh, she doesn't like. Turns out we don't have a limited slip because we are slipping. Plenty of wheel spin going on, but no, uh, no limit on that slip. So we'll have to try the Yukon next and see if the GMC can get through trenches because the Ford, at least out of the box without the limited slip, we got nice and stuck. Yep. Now, what do you think? You want to try it through trenches? Sure. You want Why to give not? it a go? Okay. Yeah. We'll take it nice and easy and see if we can bring the GMC through where the Ford had failed. I did a little <laughs> digging into the glove box where you had that little option code sheet. And yeah. this apparently it comes equipped with the G80 as it's spec. Really? Yeah, which is an automatic locker. So I'm teaching me things about my own vehicle, Tommy. Well, I like that. I like how General Motors did that. They had yeah. that like little sheet in the glove box. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. pretty clever. Right. I'll be honest, I have low expectations here. All right, I, I do too. <laughs> These are old vehicles. We don't want to break them, but we'll see how they do. So we're going to go same line as the Ford. Stuck in the same spot. There you go, oh just see gosh, that? It did it. That was the G80, baby. <laughs> so the way that works is it, it you gotta give it a little bit of wheel spin, and then once it locks, there you go, did you feel it again? Yeah. Kind of gives you a little kick in the back. Yeah, you're like spinning and spinning, and all of a sudden it just and like then all of a sudden kicks it, you right it, out of it. it. Basically it hits and then off you go. Nice. Dude. Killed it. That is awesome. So there you go. So that's the difference a locker can make. Of course, if you threw a locker in the fort, it would do quite well as well. I don't know if that had a limited slip, but whatever is going on, this definitely did that better than the Ford. So yeah. uh, overall, very impressed with the Ford off-road, but this um, this smoked it. Yeah. I mean, I guess I completed the course, or the GMC completed the course, and the Ford didn't. The Ford didn't. Although yeah. I will say, the, the parts <laughs> that it did complete, it did quite well. Yeah, it did it better. In the battle of GMC versus Ford, oof, it was a good comparison. Now, the Ford is its just a little bit cooler because it's so big and over the top and you can get it with the diesel, which is really, really rad. Uh, the, the GMC, though, was quicker and even though it wasn't as confident in some of the obstacles, because of that G G80 we were in, we were able to get through the trenches. So, I mean, you kind of have to give it to the GMC off-road as well. Now, personally, which one would I get? It's close. I think because of gas versus gas, I would go for the Yukon. I just like the interiors more. Um, they're a little bit easier to drive, a little bit more comfortable, but throw a diesel into the equation, excursion all the way, because the 7.3 is 6.0, especially with the big turbo on it, pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Huge thank you to Brenton, who is just the, the man when it comes to this kind of thing. Got more videos coming up with him, including a forgotten off-roader out here on the course. We'll see you on the next TFL Classics video.